Today, for the fifth and final part of our How I Get Away With Using Linux for Filmmaking series, we took a look at the little tools that every filmmaker needs on their computer. Hey guys, it's me, your host, Micah Pendleton, and welcome to Premiere Prep. Thank you so much for joining me for the fifth and final part in our How I Get Away With Using Linux for Filmmaking series. It has been a whole lot of fun to do, and I thank you guys so much for joining me along with it. I hope you have learned a lot, but there is still more to learn. Today, we are talking about all the little tools inside of Linux that every filmmaker needs, such as script writing, scheduling, social media, etc. So let's jump over to my workstation. For this final part, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We are not going to be jumping onto the websites, we're not going to be looking at the software, I'm just going to be mentioning them and giving you links in the description so you can go check them out yourself. A lot of these you probably know already. The reason is because there's so many and we have several different subjects to cover. Okay, so the first subject is office suites. My first option and my absolute favorite is library office this is a fantastic office suite you know microsoft office replacement but it's completely free open source it's just fantastic you guys may have heard of it i use it for pretty much everything i do the next option is google docs i'm sure you're familiar with this option it's kind of rivaling microsoft office for the number one top dog in popularity and you can use it right, right inside your web browser it's free just fantastic the final option is WPS Office. This is kind of a newcomer on the scene and uh, I haven't used it myself, but it does look very, very good, very solid, has a very Microsoft Office type interface and it's free. Uh, it's not open source, but it is free and it looks really, really good. So those are my options for Office Suites. So while we're talking about writing and everything, let's cover script writing software. And there are definitely great options right there on Linux. My personal favorite right now is Celtics. This is actually a web-based application that is definitely pretty good. But actually, when it was a standalone application before they went to completely web-based, it was a standalone Linux application as well. So it's fantastic that they had it then, they still have it now, and it's a great script writing application that can even do advanced things like storyboarding. Absolutely love it, great option. The next option is one that I loved for a long time, but then I couldn't use it anymore, and that is Trelby. Trelby is a fantastic script writing application and it is standalone installable right there on your system. But I say installable, that's why I can't use it anymore currently and that is because Trelby's maintenance has kind of fallen behind. On most distros now, it doesn't really install or run correctly. It's kind of been sad because I loved it, used it for a long time and it just kind of stopped. I'm really sad about it. You can still use it in Wine if you use the Windows version, but the Linux version for some reason, if you're using like an LTS release of Ubuntu, it probably should work okay, but it, right there on any other distro, it doesn't really work because it's fallen behind in development. It's really sad, but it was a great application. If you can get it to work, it's definitely a good choice. And again, links are to these in the description. Next up is, well, your office suite or in my case, Library Office. Library Office is again, fantastic, and it's definitely a good option for writing scripts. Just takes a little bit more work when it comes to formatting them, things like that, but your Office Suite is definitely a good option. Now on the subject of media players, we have two different options. I could have just left it at one, but to be nice, I went ahead and threw in a second one. And the reason is because number one, pretty much everybody uses period because it's so fantastic and that is VLC. VLC is Top Dog Media Player, the traffic cone if you're unfamiliar with the actual name. It is a fantastic media player. If, if it doesn't play in VLC, it's not a real video codec or format. It is fantastic. VLC, my go-to application. I just love it and you guys probably love it as well already. And it's right here on Linux, so come on over, use it. Fan, fan, fantastic. But to be nice, like I said, I threw in another option and that is Parole. Parole is pretty good. It's a nice, more minimalistic interface. It plays 
pretty much everything pretty, pretty well. Um, I love Parole as well. It's a great media player application and it's not as widely used on Linux as VLC, but it's definitely really, really good. Thought I might as well mention it as well. So Parole is another great media player as well. In our modern world, as filmmakers, we have to keep up with social media, and there are definitely great applications on Linux to do so, but I only use one, and we'll get into the reason why in just a second, but that one application is Corebird for your Twitter feed. It is a fantastic application, standalone, for your Twitter feed. It just, it works great. You can have multiple accounts. It just keeps everything up to date. I just love Corbert. It does a great, great job and highly recommend you check it out. And the other option is basically your web browser because, well, every social media option basically has a web browser, or web browser, web browser, <laughs> but it has a web browser option and it really does really what you need. I prefer Corbird for Twitter actually, but the web browser is there for everything else and that's really why I haven't used anything else. So Corbird is great for Twitter and highly recommend you check it out. Link again in the description. And on the subject of web browsers, well, pretty much every web browser that you can ever think of is right there on Linux, except for Safari and Internet Explorer, obviously. And I have my top three favorites, which I'll mention to you right now, that are absolutely fantastic. Number one is the one I currently just switched to, and that is Firefox. Nothing, real, nothing else really to say, because everybody knows Firefox. It's a great, great web browser, and it's my personal favorite right now. The other option is, well, everybody knows it and probably just about everybody uses it, and that is Google Chrome. It's right there on Linux, works great, and all the other applications like Hangouts and everything work right there on Linux flawlessly. Uh, so that is a great application. The last one you probably haven't heard of, or may not have heard of, I should say, but if you're a geek like me, you very well may have, uh, and that is Vivaldi. Vivaldi is a great web browser application but it's, uh, it's not the most accepted, it's not the most widely used, but it is a great, great web browser. I absolutely love it. It's very modern in many ways. It feels much more modern and friendly than Firefox or Chrome, but it just hasn't been uh, stabilized and refined as much as Chrome and Firefox, but it is a great, great web browser. Highly recommend you check it out. Again, link in the description to all of these applications. As filmmakers, if you're anything like me, odds are pretty good that you have a pretty busy schedule and a hectic lifestyle. And oftentimes we have ideas and we just need to jot down a really quick note. You could use a sticky note, stick it all over the place, or you could have a nice systematic file system for notes on your computer. And there are a couple of great options on Linux. Number one is GNOTE. I haven't used it a whole lot, but it does seem very, very good, and I definitely like using it a little bit more and more. Its software interface is not the best, but it is a pretty good, somewhat straightforward note system that you can definitely use. The other option is Knotes from the KDE guys. And this one I've definitely used a lot, and it just adds a sticky note right to your desktop. It's fantastic, I absolutely love it. I would say it's probably better than Knote, um, but it is really, really good. Um, so those are great applications for when you have another idea, just write it down really quick, there it is on your desktop. The last subject is screencasting. This mostly has to do with YouTubers and live streamers, but there are some great applications right on Linux for you. And the number one is a very popular one, one that I absolutely love, and that is OBS. OBS is a fantastic screencasting and recording application. It's open source, it's just great. There's hardly anything you cannot do with OBS. To include things like live green screening. Enough said. All right, so OBS is absolutely fantastic. Moving on is another favorite application of mine, the one that I mostly use for my screencasting, and that is VocoScreen. And this is not a caster, really. It's more of just a recording option. It is fantastic for recording your screen. You can do a couple of different advanced things, um, but mostly it's a great, straightforward screen recording application. I love it. And then when I was on Ubuntu systems, a favorite of mine was Kazam. Kazam was a great little screen recording application. Again, straightforward, it just did its job and it did its job well. Stumbling around a little bit there, but it was a really great application. 
So there you have it, screen recording and all the little tools that you need for filmmaking on Linux. As you can see, there is no short supply of all the tools that you need to get your job done. And they're really just great applications. I cannot thank the developers enough for putting all these great software applications right there on Linux for all of us filmmakers to use. There you have it, all the little tools on Linux that every filmmaker needs on their computer. That wraps up this episode and that wraps up this series. You can find a link to the playlist for this entire series so that hopefully you can go from beginning to end and start filmmaking on Linux if you haven't started already. This has been an absolute blast to do. I've loved this series and I hope you guys have enjoyed it and found it informative as well. Next week, we get back to general filmmaking for Premiere Prep Season 4, and we start talking about tripods, specifically budget tripods. Are they actually worth the purchase? Joining me next week for that episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Michael Pendleton. Remember to live your life one frame at a time, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>